he steals everyone's tuck and he cons me out of my ten shilling note. Do you know anybody like him in real life in your school? Oh, no. Um, I haven't got any people like that who are always hungry. Do you think he's an old-fashioned character, do you? Oh, yes, definitely. Next, we've got another of our First Steps films, and this week we enter the secret world of the Magic Circle with top magician Dominic Wood. I was 13 years old when I got interested in magic, and that's the same age that I wanted to be a TV presenter. So I had to try and combine the two. But the trick that got me started was the vanishing pencil taught to me by my drum teacher. Watch, okay, it's gonna vanish. One, two, three, three, it's gone. <laughs> Rubbish trick, I know. But uh, that's the trick that got me started, and from then on, I knew about this place called the Magic Circle, which is an amazing place. Little did I know that years later, I'd actually be a member of the Inner Magic Circle, come here on a regular basis, and have my very own cheesy picture <laughs> up on the wall. Don't laugh. Because I was bitten by the bug, it was a total and utter obsession. I used to practice about, I don't know, about every minute I could. When I wasn't doing schoolwork, um, I was doing magic. I've got a very focused mind. With every single magic competition I entered, all day, every day, all night, I used to practice till three in the morning. Luckily, it all paid off. After I uh, won the Reading Junior Day, I got automatic entry to the Magic Circle's Young Magician of the Year competition. I basically put my life and my soul into winning this. It really meant so much to me. I was all psyched up, ready to go. I went into the heats and uh, whew, went straight through them into the finals. It was a pretty nerve-wracking time for me, I can tell you. Um, so, the day came along. I came on stage. My opening trick in front of all of the Magic Circle and all these mums and dads and everyone was to make a dove a live dove appear and then flies back to my finger. It goes right all the time. Of course, when I go out there, it's showtime. The dove appears out here, brilliant, that's work. And it flies right away. It flies <laughs> into the audience and it just flaps around and then lands on the floor. I tell you, I, I just went, stop the music, I'm going off. And I went straight off. And uh, there was a deathly silence. Apparently, my family were just in their seats going, the competitor Dominic Wood would like to start again. Is that permitted? Indeed, it is. Good. So that's been... Eventually, the compare came on, and he actually gave me a second go. So he came back out on stage and uh, the dove appeared again but luckily touch wood it flew back to my finger and the audience went yeah and then I sailed through the rest of my act not one fault and uh, got to the end and I thought if I haven't won you know then that's it all my dreams are shattered and they just said and the 1995 Young Magician of the Year is Dominic Wood and that was it but the new goal was to combine the magic with TV presenting and try and get there on Children's BBC. Everyone who's everyone who worked in television got a copy of my showreel. I think the gimmick that made me successful was the fact that I could do magic. I think there were so many good presenters. I think if I was only a presenter, I don't think I'd get that far. Successful can, uh, can mean anything. Being the best at what you can do and totally focusing your mind. I think that's success. Thanks, Dominic. That was simply magic. Oh, dear. Cast aside your prejudice. Suspend your disbelief. Cast away your suspenders, if you like. What you're about to see, <laughs> never warn them. What make you see will doubt your very sanity. Then you know how I feel this evening. <laughs> so say hello to the awesome talent who's going to totally baffle and mystify you. Welcome the magician extraordinaire, Dominic Wood, who's assisted by Sandy from All Stars. Dominic and Sandy.
Sorry, I hope you don't mind. I'm just having a quick drink before I start the video. <coughs> oh, that's better. And you're probably wondering how I just did that. Well, the answer, simply magic. Hello and welcome to Simply Magic. Now, this is my magic bus and later on, I'm gonna be doing some more incredible tricks right on the very top. Now, you're probably wondering how I did the last trick. Well, I can't tell you, but later on, I will be doing some incredible tricks that you can learn and show to your family and friends. Hey, but not here though, not here. Uh, so where do we go? Uh, well, simple. The only place full of secrets is the Magic Circle headquarters. <laughs> so, let's go. Well, here we are at the Magic Circle. Oh, and by the way, if there's anyone in the room that you want to do the tricks to later on, make sure you get them out now. Um, tell them there's a schools program on. <laughs> I tell you what, you'll never see a room cleared so fast in your life. <laughs> All I have to do now is spin around, then we're off. Wow, so here we are at the Magic Circle stage. I mean, even I've performed here a few times, <laughs> but I've never done this trick until now. And it's a trick that you can do as well. Watch, all you need to do this trick is a little bit of water in the mug. There we go, that'll be enough. Now you may notice it's a Magic Circle mug, which means it's got extra quick magic powers because the water has turned into ice. So, what do you need to do this trick? Well, here is my wonderful assistant, Wanda, to tell us more. OK, Dominic, the things you'll need are a jug of water, some ice cubes, some toilet tissue and a mug. Not a glass, but a mug. Thank you, Wanda. Isn't she wonderful? You know, she's my new assistant. She's a little bit shy, but we might see her later on. I think she just heard what I did to my last assistant. You know. <coughs> anyway, on with the trick. This one's so easy, you're gonna to want to perform it straight away, but you shouldn't do that. You should always practice it first. But what you should do is take a big clump of toilet roll, make sure it's clean first before you use it. Then you tuck it into a mug. A mug this size will do fine. Then, secondly, you take an ice cube. Now this is a fake ice cube, but you can use a real one if you want. I advise a fake one, because then it won't melt whilst you're trying to do the trick, which could get a bit messy. So, place the ice cube on top of the toilet roll. Now, your audience never see inside the mug. So always hold it as if you're having a cup of tea in the morning that's full of hot tea. Now, 
To do the trick, get a bit of water and pour it into the mug. Not that much, that'll do. Do some magic and now tip the mug towards you. Never tip it away from you because you'll give the whole game away. Always tip it towards you. And then you've turned water into ice. And that is one ice cool trick. And remember, the top tip is to always tip the mug towards you and never away from you. Oh, and there's another top tip as well. Always make sure you hold on to the mug whilst you're doing the trick. Otherwise, whoa, otherwise you could end up with the mug flying away. Oh, come here. little girl about five years old I used to love doing a trick with a normal sized dice of course uh, when I was five years old a normal dice looked like this to me but never mind I'm gonna try and do the trick anyway what I want you to do is think of any number on a dice whatsoever think of that number and I'm gonna roll it on this tray are you ready here he goes <clears throat> oh never mind that's that one gone wrong never mind let's try another trick with a dice because uh, you know what, that trick was pretty clever. But those clever bods in Japan were inspired by that trick to do one in miniature. Here we go, this is the miniature one. It's in a little crystal casket, and there's a dice inside. I'm just gonna put the lid on, watch this very carefully. Count to three, one, two, three. Hey, there we go, look at that, lots of little baby dice. Now, on a baby dice theme, let's try the final dice trick before we go back to the magic circle with this one, a little red dice. This is Le Pièce de Résistance, which is French, because I'm clever, I can do magic and speak French. Here it goes. In French, un, deux, trois, ou, c'est le magique. Back to Le Magic Circle. Welcome to the official Magic Circle Club Room. This is a place where magicians come and meet once a week to show each other how they do their tricks. But no magicians here, just me and you, which is great, because I'm going to show you a fantastic trick with a pack of cards. Now, I want you to have a look at these. Check them out. They're all totally and utterly different. And I also need one to be selected. So who better to select one than Wanda? Wanda, how are you? Fine, and you? Very good. I'm fine as well, thank you very much. Now, what I want you to do is tell me where to stop any way you want. Ready? Stop. There? Good. Now, Wanda, what I want you to do is take that card and show it to the camera. Good. Now, everyone at home, remember that. Good. Thank you very much, Wanda. Now, even though the cards were all totally different, I'm going to try and change them all into Wanda's selected card, the Nine of Spades. Let's see what happens. Here we go. All I have to do is whack the pack. When I do that, something very magical happens. Watch this. I'm going to see all of the cards turn into the Nine of Spades, which was Wanda's selection. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how to do the trick now. Now, if you have a look in the box, you'll find there's a free pack of cards. Take the cards out of their box and then have a look at them. You'll notice something very strange. Half of the cards will all be mixed up different cards and the other half are all exactly the same. Now, in my pack, they're all the nine of spades, but in your pack, they could be totally different. It doesn't matter. This trick will still work perfectly. Now, if you have a look at the normal card and one of the same cards and put them next to each other, you'll notice that one of the same cards is slightly smaller than the others. Now, I'll explain why later. Now, for the trick to work, what you have to do is alternate the cards. You have to have a same card, then an ordinary card, then a same card, then an ordinary card, then a same, then an ordinary. And you carry on doing this until you've done the whole pack. And when you've done it, they should end up looking like this. All mixed up. But, you remember, the same cards are all slightly smaller in length. This is so when you flick the cards, they all look totally different. Now, you must flick them this way, and not this way, because then they'll all look the same. So, to start off, you pretend you have a regular pack of cards, and you show them to your audience by holding them like this, and flicking them like this. Now, also, wherever they tell you to stop, it will always be that same card. Look, if I stop here, look, you see? The nine of spades. If I stop there, the nine of spades, even right at the top. Still, the nine of spades. So wherever they tell you to stop, take the card out and ask them to show the audience. Whilst they're doing this, 
you cut the pack. It's very important that you do this. Wherever they've told you to stop, cut the pack and complete the cut. Now, turn the whole pack over in your hand, so now they're all facing upwards. And take the selected card back and put it on top of the pack. Now all we have to do is whack the pack, and it'll tip here. Try and get all the audience to join in and shout out, whack the pack. It just makes it a little bit more interesting. And now, when you flick them this way up, as you saw before, they will all turn into that same card, which is their selection. There we are. And you've learned a trick with that free pack of cards that you got with the video. And that's called Whack the Pack. And remember, with my pack of cards, it was the Nine of Spades. But with yours, it could be a card that's totally and utterly different. I'm Dominic Wood. This is Claire. Claire! Hi. How are you? Alright. Nice to meet you. Are you well? Yeah. Good. Have you ever done magic tricks before? No. Oh, today's going to be a first. Look, look at this. Hello, my name is Purse Frame. This is the Purse Frame. Have a look at it. Reach inside and pull out what you find. Nothing, nothing at all. Now, wouldn't it be incredible if I could just reach in there and pull something out? Yeah. Like money, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Shall I go and make money appear? Yeah. Ready? Da -da 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 -da. Oh, no money, but I have got a little spongy ball instead. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah? Now, do you use sponges often? Yeah. You do? What for doing? Washing? Yeah. Well, this is a similar kind of one, but just a lot smaller. But the great thing about this ball is that it squeaks. Have a go. No, it squeaks. Squeak. My nose squeaks. No, so does that as well. <laughs> Sorry, forget that. Examine it. Make sure it's a real normal sponge ball. Yeah? Yeah. You happy with it? Yeah. Good. Now, have you heard of sawing a lady in half? Yeah. Right, lie down, I'll get the saw out. No? Okay. <laughs> Would you prefer I do it with this instead? Yeah. Okay then. Now, watch this very carefully. I'm going to take the sponge ball and put it onto my hand. Watch. Okay, I want you to do the magic word, which is. Go on. Thanks. Okay, watch this very carefully. You just saw the ball into two as if by magic. Look at that, two. How impressed on a scale from one to ten? Ten. Hey, look at that. I like girls like that. <laughs> ten out of ten. Good. Now, could, could, you, could, you hold, could, could you hold it in your hand? Could you hold it in your hand? Thank you. Look, look, you get the one covered in spit and I'll have this one. Close your hand around it. Thank you very much. Mm, nice. Now watch, I'm gonna get this one and put it inside my pocket, right? And now watch, if you just let me put my finger in the top of your fist, watch, I'm gonna suck it up from my pocket, it goes inside my body, and into my finger and through my finger into your hand. Have a look. Wow! Amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much, I'm glad you said that in the end. <laughs> now, can, can I have one of these? Pick any one. That one, hold out that hand. The other hand, because it's cleaner, close it. Now, can I have that sponge ball, please? Is that right? Because now we're going to do something totally amazing. Hold your hand up in the air. Don't open it yet. Now, watch this very carefully. I'm going to take this sponge ball and place it into my fist. Right into my fist like this. Now, it's going to vanish in one hand. Watch. One, two, three. It's gone. Did you feel it arrive? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Slowly open up your hand. My word, you've done it again. How did you do it? I don't know. The answer is very well indeed. You did it very well. Thank you very much for helping me, Claire. There we go. She's a magician, you know. Woo! This is the Devant Room. David Devant was the first ever president of the Magic Circle. And he could do all sorts of clever tricks. But I bet you tried this. <laughs> oh, now, do not try that at home. <laughs> but you could try this, if you can do it. <laughs> now, these are two drinking straws. Actually, I won't put them in my mouth now. <laughs> and I'm just going to place them parallel and about two inches away from each other. Now, you know when you get a balloon and you rub it against your head, you can stick it to the wall. That's because it's statically charged with static electricity. Now, I'm going to try and do the same, but with these straws. Watch. I'm going to charge up my finger. There we go. That should be about enough. Now, watch what happens to the straws. Watch. Hey, isn't that great? They whiz away from each other. Now, if you get someone else to try this trick, they might wear their finger down to the bone. That's because it's nothing to do with static electricity. That's just a bluff. And as well as the bluff, you've got to have a lot of puff, because that's how you do the trick. Now look, if I'm going to put the straws down here, about two inches away from each other, they've got to be parallel as well. Now, you pretend to charge your finger up, but that's not how it's done. What you're actually doing, when you put your finger in the middle, secretly, quietly, and softly, you blow on your fingertip. 
and that will send the straws whizzing apart from each other. Watch this. Hey, you see? There we go. And if you do that trick to your audience, they'll be blown away. Sick of stains? Dogged by dirt? Can't get those ground-in greasy marks out? Well, don't worry, because new Hey Presto Magic Washing Powder is here. Just give it a sprinkle all over your wash to get everything magically whiter than white. Shazam! Pity that shirt was meant to be red. <laughs> Hi, Dominic Wood. I'm here, still on the top of the bus with uh, Nick. Nick what? Chopper. And what do you do for a living? No. Nothing? No, school. Oh, are oh, you still at school? Okay, fair yeah. enough. Shake my hand. How do you do? Right, good luck. We've got a pack of cards here. They're all different. I, will, I would show you the whole lot, but we'll be here all day. What I want you to do, as I run my thumb down the cards, there are 52 cards. You tell me to stop anywhere you want. Wherever you tell me to stop, you have that card. Okay, is that fair? Yeah. Good. Don't! They've come to arrest me! Go away! No, it's fine. For someone else. That's okay. We're fine. Don't worry. Tell me where to stop. Stop. There. Do you want to go on a bit or back a bit? No. No? Stay. There. Yeah. Okay. What I want you to do is take the card where you told me to stop. Put it face up there on the table. Yeah, That's face up. So I, it doesn't matter if I see it. Doesn't okay. matter. Okay, and so, with your this pen, write your name just across the corner of the cards. Can you do that? Yeah. Marvellous. Thank you. You know when you've seen people writing on a, on a grain of rice? This is as close as you'll get to it. Look, look at that. Nick, Nick. Tiny little writing, that's very good. Okay, we don't need a pen anymore. Now, do you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna sandwich your card in between these two cards. Now these two cards are the two black queens from a pack. We've got the queen of spades, and we've got the queen of clubs. Look, the queen of spades goes there. Your card goes on top of the queen of spades, and then the queen of clubs goes on top of that one as well. Okay, you happy about that? Yeah. Okay, so your card's gonna get a sandwich. Now, if you notice, these cards have got holes on them so that you can see your card right in the middle. Okay, we're gonna slide them together. Now, what I want you to do is hold out your hand, flat like a table, okay, good. Now, what I want you to do is turn it that way and we're gonna give the pack a cut and now put your hand on top. Come on, put your hand on top of the pack and leave it there. Let's recap what we've done. Nick, you had a free choice of card, didn't you? Yeah. And you chose the, what was it? Yeah, free Three of hearts. Three of hearts. And yeah. you signed your name on it, didn't you? Yeah. And it's still there, because you can see it. Now watch very carefully. Still there, but not for long. One, two, three. And it's vanished. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Isn't that gobsmacking? Bewildering? Yeah. Great. What I want you to do now, Nick, is to lift your hand off the cards. Watch. We're just going to spread the cards out. And there, in the middle of the cards, is a card that's face up. What card's that? Three of hearts. Not any old three of hearts. It's actually got your name written on it. Is that your card? Yeah. Is that your name? Yeah. Is that magic? Yeah. We'll show it to the camera. Go on, show it right close to the camera. And I shall give you a one man round of applause. <laughs> This trick is called Lick the Stick, and it's so simple once you know how. It uses one of these. This is a swizzle stick. They get used for stirring cocktails, and you can find them in posh restaurants and bars. So next time you go there, ask for one, and then take it back. Then you can do the trick. Look, it's called Lick the Stick, because I'm going to lick the stick. I'm doing that so I can pour some salt all over it, and now hopefully the salt should stick to the swizzle stick. Now look, you can see there's salt on one side, but no salt on the other. But to make it vanish, all I have to do is click my fingers, and the salt totally vanishes from both sides. Ha <laughs> ha! I know what you're thinking. You think I probably just flicked it off really quickly, didn't you? Ah, but no, because all I have to do is wave my hand over it, and the salt comes back. But not just on one side, <laughs> but on the other side as well. Ta-da! Look, it's not a special tongue. It's not special salt, and it's not even a special swizzle stick. But it is a special motion that you have to make with your hands. Look at this very carefully. Now, the swizzle stick has to get moved from this position up to this position. Now, that's not very difficult, is it? But you have to combine it with this rocking motion between your thumb and your fingers, like this. Now, when you do the two together, it'll look like you're showing both sides of the stick, but in fact, what you're doing is showing the same side twice like this. This is very slowly, but when you speed it up and you've had a lot of practice, it'll look like this. 
is actually surprisingly easy. So this is how the trick goes. Lick the stick, pour a bit of salt on, and there it is. It's on one side, but not the other. To make it vanish, simply cover your hand and spin your thumb over the stick. That'll change it around so it looks like it's gone. Then do the special move to show it blank on both sides. Then to make it reappear, all you have to do is cover your hand over it, move your thumb to spin it around, and it's reappeared. But to show it on the other side, do the special move again. And that is lick the stick. But it all depends on that special move. Have a look at it again. So there you go. Once you've mastered the move, you can do anything. Just use your noodle a bit. I'm going to try using these, some smiley face stickers. And I'm going to use a blue one and place it onto the swizzle stick so that it's smiling to everyone. There you go. Now, even though I've just placed it on one side, magically, it's on the other side as well. Look at that. And the real magic comes when I just cover it up and change it from a blue to a yellow one on both sides. Hey, now you probably worked out how to do it as well. At the very beginning, I had the yellow smiley face on the other side. Stuck the blue one on, did the special move, then covered it with my hand, turned it over, made it change to yellow, then did the special move one more time to show it yellow on both sides. And there you go. That's the swizzle stick trick. And if you do it properly, you'll make all of your audiences smile. Hello. Hello. What's your name? Amy. Is it Amy? Nice to meet you. My name's Dominic. Um, now, tell you what, for the next trick, I need something. Have you got a, uh, a silk handkerchief that's about five centimeters uh, wide, 60 centimeters long, uh, made of 100% pure silk and is of the color purple? No. No? Well, just as well I have then. Look at this. Now, this is a challenge for you, okay, Amy? If you do this challenge correctly, you will win 10 pounds. How do you fancy that? Most people will get quite excited by him. But yeah, you do want 10 quid. All you have to do is get this handkerchief and then tie a knot in it like that. Very simple, just tie a knot in the handkerchief. If you can do that, you get 10 pounds. There you go. But there's a snag. Hold this end in this hand and this end in this hand. Now you're not allowed to let go of the ends. Do you think you could still do it? Yeah, and I'm going to be holding your wrist to try and put you off, so go for it. Go on. Go on. Go on. Can you do it? There is a way of doing it, by the way, and I'll show you guys later on as well. Okay, go on, go on, keep going. We've got 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, zero. <laughs> Never mind. So I'll show you how to do it. What you do is you lay out, because you just hold it out like this. Right, I'm going to grab this end in this hand, and this end in this hand. Give me that end. Ah! Oh. Because if you fold your arms beforehand, and then you grab it, look, I'm still not letting go. And I've tied a knot in the handkerchief. Ta-da! How about that? Now, would you like 10 pounds anyway? Yeah. You would? Yeah. You expect me to give you 10 pounds? Or would you like a booby prize? Go on, have a choice. Booby prize or 10 quid? Who won? 10 quid. 10 quid? Yeah. Okay, I'll show you what the booby prize is first, then you can decide. The booby prize is uh, your watch. Now, would you like to change your mind? Would you like 10 pounds of your watch back? I thought you would. There you go. Thank you very much for being a lovely helper. Ready for another amazing card trick? Well, you've come to the right place. Now, uh, this card trick uses a specific card. It's the Jack of Spades. Now, the Jack of Spades was very special because soon he was going to become king, but he was also very impatient. So he wanted to become king like that. So, let's see what we can do. One night, he covered himself up with a duvet, and then he called on Merlin, the court wizard, who took a magic wand, cast a magic spell, and when he woke up in the morning, the jack had turned into the king, the king of diamonds. Hey, what a great trick, and here's what you need to do it. The jack, the king, and another card from the same pack of playing cards, a large handkerchief, and some glue. Excellent, so that's what you need. But I must emphasize, do not use the special pack of cards that comes with the video. You'll be in all sorts of trouble. Use a normal pack of cards, but make sure you ask permission before you cut up the pack of cards. Okay, now to do this trick, you're gonna have to make a special hinged card. Have a look. It looks normal on the back, but on the front, if you have it one way, it'll be one card. If you hinge it over the other way, it will look like another card. And this is how you're gonna make it. Now, take three cards, remember, one of them is just a regular card, and the other two are court cards. And fold them both in half. What you have to do is fold them face inwards, like that, with one card. And then do it exactly the same 
with the other card as well. Now once you've done this, you need to apply some glue to these cork cards, and not this one. So take some tubed glue and spread it all over the backs, nice and thick. There you go. And do exactly the same to the other one as well. There we are. Once you've done that, it's sticking time. All you have to do is place one of them halfway along the card like this, and then another one on the other half. Now this will stick them to the indifferent card and also stick the cork cards together on the hinged flap. There we are. And now you have to wait for a couple of minutes for it to dry. That's the boring bit. But once it's dried, it's worth the wait because you'll end up with something that looks like this. There we are. Now you've made it. And this is how to perform it. You take the card and you go through the story of the jack wanting to be a king. Now, you take the handkerchief, which is just down here, and you cover it over the top. Now, once it's over the top, with your finger and your thumb, you hold through the handkerchief the card. Then the other hand underneath folds the flap down. Now, to take the heat off it a bit, have a magic wand ready. You can make one of these by getting a stick and painting it black and white. Wave it over the top, remove the handkerchief, and voila, you have changed a jack into the king as if by magic. Communication is a wonderful thing. We all like to talk and to keep in touch. It's nice to know that there's someone listening. But if you want to get really close to the person you're talking to, then use the new magic call mobile phone. You can be with your friends anytime. Just remember to dial carefully. Oops. We're still here in London on the top of the bus and we have home of uh, Nelson's Column, Big Ben and Little Dom, the magician. So we're going to do a magic trick with these two guys. Hello. Hello. How are you? What's your name? Julie Jordan. Julie Jordan. And your name is? Meryl Jordan. Meryl Jordan. Yeah. Meryl. So you two related then? Well, Sisters. Yes, I can tell that's it's the young right. looks. Am I right? That's it. Did I win points? You did. I'm only flattering that you now, so if the trick goes wrong later, you'll let me off. Right. Because the trick uses your ring. Oh, Have gosh. you got a ring that you can take off that yes, I can borrow? Yes. What's the most valuable one? Uh, that one. Can I have that one? Go on then. Oh, go on then. Okay, oh, and actually, yeah. best not. Uh, what about the gold one? Is that, does that come off easier? That one? Well, anyone will do, anyone. It doesn't really matter. You oh. choose, you choose oh, and I'll do the trick right with it. Yeah. So you're going for the expensive one? Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, looks a bit cheap. Does it have any sentimental value? Well, a little bit. <laughs> I'm only joking. It looks beautiful. It looks like a lovely ring. So we shall do the trick. Now, what was your name again? Meryl. Meryl. Yeah. Meryl. You hold a lot of responsibilities when this trick happens because you are going to have to hold your mum's ring, okay? Is that okay? Yeah. What I want you to do is hold it through the handkerchief. You must be able to feel it there. Go on, feel it. Do you feel it? Yeah. Good. Now you hold on to that, okay? Hold it, I'll hold it really high in the air. If the trick goes wrong, it's whose fault? I suppose it's mine. <laughs> it is yours. <laughs> okay, so let's do uh, use the other thing. What do magicians use a lot to do magic? A wand. A wand indeed, and I have a wand right here. Look, all we have to do is do this. Waha, yaha, waha, little hola, 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 waha, and do the magic word, which is. Okay. Come on. Very good, mum. Do the. Very good. Do you know what the magic wand and all that magic word does? Yep. Absolutely nothing, but it makes you look silly anyway. Okay. Hold up in the air. Watch this. Now, do you know the nursery rhyme? A ring, a ring of roses, pocket full of poses. How does it end? A tissue, a tissue. We all fall down. Yeah, we all fall down. So drop the handkerchief. We all fall da down. Down. Meryl, where's your mum's ring? You were holding it last. You could definitely feel it through the handkerchief, yes. couldn't you? It was definitely yes. there. So where is it? Well, this is amazing. It's actually back on your finger. No, it's not really, but it would have been a good trick, eh? <laughs> oh, well, that's that trick. Thank you very much. Cheers for helping. Okay. Back to the magic circle. What? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see a card trick? So you want to see another? Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, <laughs> sorry, I'll, we've got to stop putting you through all this. Yeah, your yeah. ring, you want your ring back. Yes, okay, but if you think about that nursery rhyme that we did, which is ring a ring a roses. ring a ring of roses, I can't give you your ring back, but instead, how about this? It's a beautiful, beautiful rose in a. Oh, oh, hey, look at that, there's actually something inside. This is a clear glass tube, which is right. sealed top and bottom with a wooden bung. We're just going to remove the shot one. Take hold of that, please. Thank you very much. We're going to remove, you can remove the rose yourself. Okay. Take it off very carefully, very slowly. Don't worry, it will stay there, it will stay there. Take off the rose. 
Okay, there we go. Now look, there's no way that that can actually get on there. The only way we can actually take it off, is that your ring by the way? It is. It is, thank goodness for that. If it wasn't, it'd be a bad trick. The only way to take it off is by removing the rose head, like that, hold out your arms, cut. Very good, we're just gonna tip that into your hand, put the rose back. You may have that for being a wonderful helper. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ooh, phew. <laughs>
Haven't you always wanted to do a trick with money? I mean, like, get your pocket money and then magically double it? Wouldn't that be great? Well, I've got some news for you. You can't do it, <laughs> but you can do a different trick. This one's just as good anyway. <laughs> Look, it uses two one pound coins. And what I'm gonna try and do is balance them together. Watch. <clears throat> there we go. <gasps> Whoa. <laughs> this could fall off any minute. I think that's balanced. Don't breathe at home. Actually, no, you better, otherwise you could get in trouble. <laughs> Watch. This is the real magic. And they stick together, just like real funny money. Now, check this out. What I have to do is click my fingers, and they drop off, and you're back to normal. Hey, there you go. Now, I'm going to tell you how to do the trick. All you need is um, <laughs> a couple of pounds. Plus, you also need two other things. You need some sellotape, and you also need a little match. Now, make sure you ask permission first before you get the matches, and get an adult to remove the head of the match. Once you've done that, get the sellotape and just stick it over the top. Now, when you start the trick off, what you do is you hold the coin in your hand so that the fingers are hiding the matchstick and your thumbs over the top as well. Now, because you're holding the coin like this in this hand, you should hold the other coin exactly the same way in the other hand so that it doesn't look suspicious. If you did this, it might look a bit strange, but hold it like this. Now, when it comes to the performance, all you have to do is put the coins together behind the cover of your hand like this and hold the matchstick with your thumb. There we go. Now, obviously don't do this straight away once you put them together. Don't go like that, ta-da, because it'll give it away a bit. What you have to look like you're doing is really balancing them together. So, do a bit of this, and make it look like you're balancing them. Then do some magic and tilt them to the side and it'll look like they stick together. Then, to release them, all you have to do is let go with your thumb and the coin will drop with the matchstick attached to it, like that. Then just bring them both back into your hands and say that that's a trick with funny money. Ha, <laughs> there you go. But you know what? I've got a bit of a twist on that trick. I don't like using the one with the matchstick. So I do a different trick, watch. I've got a couple of coins, no matchsticks this time. Watch very carefully. What I have to do is place them together very gently Great, but here's the best bit. Go, 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 go on, go on, go around. Excellent, there we go. That's some very, very, very funny money. This is Charlene, everybody. Charlene, look at everyone and say hello. Hello. There you go, shake my hand and say hello. Hello. Thank you, hello. <laughs> now, have you ever helped a magician do tricks before? No. Oh, a first timer. Okay, this is gonna be really good. Look, I want you to have a look at all the pack. They're all totally different. Okay, you can see that? They're all different. Uh, what I want you to do is select any card, okay? have a free choice of any card. Okay, put it down there, the other way around. Okay, now what I want you to do is draw a picture of a bat on it. Can you do that, a vampire bat? Are you good at art? A little. Okay, go for it, let's just have a look. I'll be the judge of whether you're a good uh, artist or not. I said a bat, not a cat. <laughs> That's um, interesting. And just write your name right along the, the margin there as well. That's absolutely beautiful. Terrible. Thank you very much. Marks out of 10, what do you think you get? Zero. Zero, okay then. Now look, what I want you to do, what do you think vampire bats and uh, and Dracula scared of? Garlic. Garlic, and it just so happens, uh. per chance, I have a pot of garlic right here. Now I want you to uh, select a clove of garlic, any one that you want, okay? That one? Yes. Sure? You want to change your mind? Mm. Well, it's too late, you can't anyway. Uh, okay, now what I want you to do is take a great big bite out of that, no, I'm joking. No, don't, don't actually do that. You'll have really smelly breath. Okay, what I'm going to do is get your card here, one with Charlene written on it, and we're going to bury it into this pack of cards, into the middle, right? Now, let's pretend that the pack of cards is a haunted house. We're going to put the vampire bat in there. Now, because vampire bats are scared of garlic, what I want you to do is wave that over the top. Very good. And it scares it right to the top. Amazed? Yes. No? Okay. Right, a little bit of darkness. Oh my word, an eclipse of the sun. Oh, it's back again. <laughs> Look, we're going to get your name, okay, your vampire bat, and put it into the middle of the pack. Look, it really is in the middle, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah? Rub the garlic over the top. Watch. And it jumps to the top again. How is this done? I do it. Why is it done? <laughs> okay, look, we're going to do it again. Put it into the middle of the pack. We're going to do it until you get really bored, I hope you realise. Put it into the middle of the pack, snap, <laughs> wave the garlic over the top. 
and it jumps to the top again. Now this time we're gonna do it slightly differently, okay? We're not even gonna put it anywhere near the pack. It's gonna stay right there. Okay. Rub the garlic on the top. Now, do you know what it does? It vanishes. Have a look at the card. Have a look. Yeah. Turn, over your, turn over your vampire card. And it's totally vanished. Look at that. Where's it gone? In the No, I'll tell you where it's gone. Take the garlic pot and push it towards you. Put it towards you. Now, lift off the lid. There's something inside amongst all of the garlic. Can you see that? Yeah. Hold the pot towards the camera so it can see it right inside. What does it look like inside? Card. There's a card. And the card's folded up into quarters, isn't it? Let mm -hmm. me just take it out. They are. What I need to do is take out the card, unfold it. If that is your card, will you be amazed? Yes. And is it your card? Yes. Are you amazed? Yes. Show it to the camera. That, folks, is real magic. <laughs> Now this next trick usually uses a piece of string, but today to make it a little bit more exciting, I decided to use this shoelace, and it belongs to our sound recordist. <laughs> Oi! Well don't worry, I'm going to give it back. That's what you said when you borrowed my watch. Ah, don't worry, it'll be fine. <clears throat> Trust me, I'm a magician. Now as well as using your shoelace, I'm also going to use this. It's a paper tunnel which is totally hollow. Hello! Now this is actually an envelope, and I've just stuck it down and cut the ends off. What I'm going to do is get your shoelace and push it all the way through this envelope and then out the other end as well. So you can actually see it hanging out of the left and the right hand side. Now I'm just going to take this pair of scissors. You can't see what I'm seeing. He's sweating with nerves. And I'll have to just cut it in half. But amazingly, because I can do some magic, the envelope is cut in half, but the shoelace remains intact. Ah, there we are. So you're probably wondering what you need to do this trick. Well, it's over to Wanda for the details. To make this trick, you'll need to find some string, or a shoelace, a small envelope, and a pair of scissors. Yeah, thanks Wanda. I think we could have worked that out for ourselves, but still keeps her busy. Right, you're probably wondering how to make this special envelope. Well, I shall tell you. All you do is get an envelope. It can be any size, really, but I like using this size. And then this is the fun bit. You lick it and stick it. Now what you have to do is take a pair of scissors and cut off one end and do exactly the same with the other as well. Now, nothing special has happened here. All you've done is you've made yourself a paper tunnel. Now what you're going to do is make a couple of secret slits at the back. To do this, fold it over, take the scissors, make a snip here, then about a centimetre or two away, make another snip. And now you make a secret escape passage. Now to perform the trick, your audience think you're just getting a shoelace and threading in one side and then out of the other. But this is how you really do it. This is behind the scenes. You thread the shoelace in one end, it comes out of the envelope, and now back through the other slit that you've made, back inside the envelope. You take it and put it out the other end. Now, to your audience, it looks totally normal, doesn't it? But from the back, we can see the string out the back. So now take the scissors and you cut like this, making sure that the back blade is in between the string and the envelope. Now what you do is simply cut all the way up the middle, right to the very top, hold it in place, put the scissors down, part the envelope, and there you have it. You've cut the envelope in half, but the shoelace is intact. Ha <laughs> ha, there we go, the strong string trick. Oh, by the way, be very careful with your scissors, and also be very careful with your sound man, <laughs> even though he does look like an ape. <laughs> anyway, the... Need a car with a bit more elbow room? Presenting the new 2-litre Dominique car. Big family, no problem. You can put seven people in the Dominique car and still have room for four suitcases. How did we do it? The answer is magic, of course. That and we took the engine out. Still, it looks nice in the driveway. Ha! Ah, now, how would you like to read people's minds? 
You would? Well, you can delve into people's brains and find out what they're thinking. You don't want to do that with my brain though, trust me. <laughs> but here is a prediction envelope, and inside is, well, a prediction. <laughs> I could have predicted that. Now I'm going to leave it here in full view. Now the trick also uses a pack of cards. I'm going to show you them. Each and every card is totally different, but we need one to be selected in the fairest way possible. So Wanda, how are you? Well... All right, don't build your part. Now what I want you to do, because there's 52 cards in a pack, select any number between 1 and 52. 15? 15. Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to count down 15 cards. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now, this is your selected card. It's the nine of spades. If you had chosen the number 14, you would have had the six of clubs. If you chose the number 16, it would have been the Ace of Hearts. But you selected the Nine of Spades. Let's have a look to see what's inside the prediction envelope. <gasps> Fingers crossed. Let's have a look. The envelope is otherwise empty, but inside there is a piece of card that says, you will pick the Nine of Spades. Ta-da! How's it done? It's simply magic. Ah, there you go. I did a mind-reading prediction effect. And now you can too, because I'm going to explain how to do it. You may have guessed already, it uses this. The Svengali pack, that's the free pack of cards that comes with the video. Now, you must make sure, like I said earlier, that the cards run like this. A same card, a different card, a same card, different card, same card, different card, all the way through the pack. And another important tip is make sure that your same card is on top of the pack. Remember, this is the nine spades for me, but with your pack of cards, it could be a different card. It doesn't matter though. Now, what you need to do next is take a piece of card and on it, write, you will pick the, and then write whatever your forced card is. In my case, it is the nine of spades, okay? And as an extra little touch, write the word magic on the back. Now, place that into an envelope, draw a question mark on the front, just to make it look a little bit more mysterious, and then seal it up and put it onto the table. Now, all you have to do, like before, show the pack are all totally different by holding it like this, and flicking with your finger, comme ça. This is French for like that, okay? Look, so you can see all the cards are different. Now, what you do next depends on whether the number is odd or even. Remember I asked one would wonder a number between 1 and 52? Now, if it's odd, you do this. Now, let's say it's number 5. You do this, watch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You count 5, and the fifth card, because it's odd, will be the 9 of spades, or your forced card. However, if they choose the number 8, let's say, which is an even number, you do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now it's not the eighth card, but you put that one down. So you go eight, there we go. And the next card is the nine of spades. There you go. So whichever their, their number is, odd or even, between one and 52, they will always pick the nine of spades, even though you showed the whole pack to be different. Now all you have to do is build up the attention a bit. Build up the tension by getting the envelope, showing it back in front, your hands totally empty, open it up, take out your prediction, and it will say the name of your card and then turn it around to say that that's magic. Hey, a mind reading prediction effect. And I'm gonna do another one right now. I predict that a good looking, gorgeous, talented, wonderful magician will be doing more amazing magic on the top of a bus. It's a beautiful day in London town and this is a beautiful lady who is? Sarah. Sarah, how you doing? You all right? Fine, Sarah what? Sarah man. And you are from? Snodland. Where? Snodland. Okay, uh, could you examine that pen please? Gently. <laughs> okay, make sure it's just a regular pen. Yep. Good, I'm happy because it is just a pen. Um, also, we've got lots of things inside this wallet, very exciting things. One of them is, well, I've got a few notes. I've got a five pound note, a 10 pound note, and a 20. Which uh, which note would you like to use? Um, Go on, name anyone. Five, five pound note, yeah. which is that one there. Not very daring, most people go for the 20 pound note, considering it's my money as well. Now, watch, examine that as well. So you've had a look at the pen and the note. Happy? Yep. Now there are a lot of forgeries going around at the moment, did you know that? A lot of fake notes. And the way you tell whether it's a fake note or not is by getting a pen exactly like this one and going like this and sticking it right through the note. Okay? okay. Now watch this very carefully. Now you can tell that this is a real note because the pen's gone all the way through it. But if it was a fake note, you could take it out and the hole would heal like this. Watch. One, two, three, go. Would you like to see a different trick instead? 
So your brain looks like it's going 10 to the dozen over that one. Okay, I'll, I'll do a trick with a, a credit card. Now, the credit card should be inside here. But a credit card. I'm going to give you the chance to win this credit card. Would you like that? Yeah. yeah? Fantastic. All right, well, you can win it. I'm going to put it in here for the moment. Okay, fold it up. Now, I'm going to get you to pick a card. I've got three attempts to try and find your card. If I fail, you get the credit card. How about that? Right. Yep. Okay. Okay, what I want you to do is uh, take a card. Okay, I'm gonna shuffle them up and cut the pack. Okay, as I run through them, take, take a card as it leaps out to me. Take it, show it to the camera. Have you done that? And remember that card. Okay, put it back anywhere you want. Done that? Thanks. Yep, push it right in. Or shuffle. Do you wanna shuffle the cards? No. No, okay. Look, I'm gonna try and find your card. Are you ready? What it's gonna do is gonna jump out of the pack. Are you ready? Watch, one, two, three. Oh, I, oh. Not it. It wasn't it? No. You managed to see it, it was flying that fast? Yep. Great, okay, that's attempt number one, it's over. Okay, uh, attempt number two, I'm gonna cut your card, ready? Hunt. What was your card? Don't tell me, is that it? No. Okay, uh, we've got one more go at doing it, but this is the most impressive one, here we go, is watch. See the jack of clubs? All you have to do is just rub it on your hand and it changes into your card. No? That wasn't it, no. But it was a good trick anyway, wasn't it? It was very good. Alright, okay, I'll tell you what, I've done the trick wrong, and what did I say you get if the trick goes wrong? Credit card. My credit card, would you like it? Yeah. Ah, but you can't, because I've got one last thing to do. Watch this very carefully, watch, watch, watch. Watch, watch, watch. It's a credit card, but not for long, because all you have to do is throw it in the air, and it changes into the Nine of Diamonds, which is your card, yes? Yeah. Is that incredible? Yep. Thank you very much. Back to the magic circle! <laughs> Oh, that's better. Now, this next trick is sweet. Why is it sweet? Well, because it uses sugar cubes. Now, I need this sugar cube initialed to make it one in a million. And who better to do it than Wanda? Wanda, hey then, could I, uh, could I just ask you to initial that? Thank you very much. Just put your initials right across the front with pencil. There's the W and, the, and an A. I don't know what the A stands for. There we are. Thank you very much. If you can see that, it says W-A. What does the A stand for? Abracadabra. Oh, well, there we go. Now, Wanda, could you put out your hand, palm up? Thank you very much. I'm just going to pop this into the glass of water. There are your initials. And now, what I want you to do is turn your palm face down and place it on top of the glass. All we have to do now is a bit of Simply Magic Magic. And the pencil goes from the sugar cube up, up, up. Now, can you turn your hand to face the camera? You can see it says WA on the palm of your hand. Isn't that amazing? Thank you, Wanda, you can go now. Stop building your part. <laughs> now, I'm gonna tell you how to do the trick, and it uses exactly what I've got here. Now, this is how we do the trick. Let me just rub this off my thumb. There we go. Now, you take a sugar cube and get someone to initial, initial it. Now, I'm gonna put my initials on there, for argument's sake. There's a D for Dominic, and a W for Wood. Ask them to put it on nice and thick. Now, whilst they're doing this, you secretly lick your thumb. Now, you take the sugar cube back from them and you place it in between your finger and thumb. Now, their initials will be transferred to your thumb. Move the glass over to the side of the table and ask them to put their hand out, palm up. Thank you very much. Now, you place the sugar cube into the water. This is the sneaky bit. The reason why they have their hand palm up is so that you can transfer their initials from your thumb onto their hand. And you do it like this. Could you please put your hand palm down over the glass? Now they don't know it, but you secretly transferred it onto their palm now. All you do now is some Simply Magic Magic and pretend that the pencil is going up, up, up through the water, through the air and onto the hand. And now when they turn the hand over, look at that, DW on Wanda's hand. Isn't that great? Wanda, put it there. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's time for the last trick on Simply Magic. Ah, oh, but it's a goodie, and it's a trick with a twist, and it comes in two parts. First of all, part one. Look, I've got a pack of cards, and they're all different, but we need one selected, so it's Wanda. Wanda, what I want you to do is take about a quarter of the cards, turn them face up, and put them on top of the pack. Thank you. Isn't she brilliant? Now, take about half the pack, including those ones you just turned over, turn them over, and put them back on top. Marvellous. Now, even though Wanda's done a free cut, I'm going to get her to pick the first face-down card. There it is. 
Take that card and show it to the camera. I won't look, but I think it could be the five of clubs. Correct, oh, no, there you go. <laughs> hey, wander off, <laughs> wander off. <laughs> <clears throat> look, this trick's so simple, you'll love it, and it will work automatically. Look, get the five of clubs from a normal pack of cards. Ah, you thought it was a Svengali pack, but no, it is a regular pack. So, press pause, zoom off, and get some cards. Done it? Well, that was quick. <laughs> now, find the five of clubs and place it face down on top of the pack. Now the trick will work automatically. Ask them to take quarter of the cards, turn them face up and put them on top. Now get them to take half of the cards, including them, turn them face up and put them back on top. Now, when you go through the cards, the first face down card will be, hopefully, the five of clubs. There you go. So practice that for a bit and then with the videotape still in the machine, go and get your friends into the room and do the trick. Go on. But once you do the trick, and you make them pick the five of clubs and put it back into the pack. Pretend that the trick's gone wrong. Go, um, is that your card? They'll fall about laughing, thinking you're a rubbish magician. So try for another card. Um, is that your card? They'll think you're rubbish even more. And then press play from this point in the video. Ah, <laughs> oh, hello. You having a few problems with your card trick? You are. Can't find your card. Ah, oh, well, don't worry. It's just beginner's luck. It happens to everyone who starts out in magic. I mean, she didn't see what happened to me when I started. I tried to saw my brother in half. Oh, terrible mess. He's now got a split personality. <laughs> Look, anyway, let's try and find your card. <clears throat> Go. Ooh. There we are. And was your card the five of clubs? Amazing. Oh, hang on. I've got another call coming in. <laughs> Hello, Magic Help! Helpline! How can I help you? What? You turned your granny into a what? You sick little monkey. Well, that's it from Simply Magic, but if you want to be as good as Mr. Wizard here, then all you have to do is practice, practice, and practice. Because remember, practice makes perfect. And if you want to keep magic magic, then keep the secrets a secret. Don't tell anyone how to do your tricks. Now, if you want to learn even more, then you can do with the help of the Magic Circle by joining the Young Magicians Club. To apply and get a membership pack, write to the Young Magicians Club, Centre for the Magic Arts, 12 Stevenson Way, London NW12UD. You'll need to include your name, address, date of birth, and a cheque for £20 payable to the Magic Circle Youth Initiative. So, good luck with your journey into the world of ooh, ooh, magic. And I hope you found this show mm, uh, uh, illuminating. Bye. So, when you say action, do you want me to make the rabbit appear? Okay. Okay. And, oh, uh, sorry, Al. And all I have to do is roll up my sleeves, wave the wand, and as if by magic, a rabbit out of the hat. Oh, sorry. All I have to do is wave the wand over the top, and as if by magic, all we have to do is... Oh, I've done it again. Sorry. Okay. All I have to do is wave the wand over the top of the hat, do a little bit of simply magic, and as if by magic, we have the... Oh. Hang on, rabbit might be on the end of it. Hang on, I, I'm sorry. Can we do it one more time? Oh.